Hey everybody, Jason here with gd and Basics and today's video question line. Today's topic is true position and diametric deviations. The question submitted was, when I look up the difference between position and true position, I never really get an answer on the difference in calculations. The difference in calculations when diameter symbol is in the feature control frame versus when it's not. Uh, the short answer is when the diameter symbol is not there, it's more than likely just a typo. Let's take a look at the sample drawing here. So generally, you will almost always see a diameter symbol preceding the tolerance value in the position feature control frame. Whenever we're controlling a diametric feature, the tolerance zone is trying to constrain the location of the axis of that cylindrical feature. So in the case of a cylindrical feature, we're going to have a tolerance zone who's also a cylinder. So this value here is a diametric value. Now, there are unique scenarios where we might drop off that diameter symbol uh, to control the location of an axis in a very different way, but the dimensioning scheme is going to look very different. More than likely, what we have happening here is simply a typo uh, missing from that diameter symbol. It's something I do commonly. It's something our software allows us to do, unfortunately. So for this example, we're going to assume moving forward that this is not one of those very unique niche situations. It's truly just a typo with this diameter missing from the feature control frame. So if we make that assumption, we're going to talk about the difference between position and true position. Now this drawing has both position and true position identified on the drawing itself. They are two separate entities. Uh, true position being identified as the target or the ideal location of that hole with respect to the datum reference frame. Datum feature E is this hole right here. So we have a feature of size as a datum feature, which just then gives us an axis as the datum. And an axis as a primary datum can control two translations and two rotations. And then we introduce datum B, which is this surface up here, locking in the remaining degrees of freedom if necessary. But let's focus on just E. Again, E is going to give us the 0, 0, 0 for our datum reference frame. And we know that the true position exists 0.187 in X from our 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.110 in Y from our 0, 0, 0. And so we know exactly where this hole should be with respect to our datum reference frame, and that location is called the true position. Then we go ahead and center the position tolerance on that true position. So we have a 6 thousandths diameter tolerance zone centered at true position. And so this is truly the position symbol. A lot of people call it the true position symbol, but it's at technically the position symbol, which gives us the position tolerance. And the true position is the bullseye or the ideal location that this hole should be at. Uh, obviously, we'll measure away from that. So if we have the true position identified on the drawing using basic dimensions, we know this is where the true position should be. Uh, 0.187 and 0.110 and x and y respectively, we know the hole is not going to probably measure at that location, but it definitely is going to have some deviation away from true position. And so we're given those example measurements, uh, giving a x deviation uh, away from its true position of uh, 0.0012 or the difference between 0.1882 and 0.187. So we have an x deviation of 0.0012. And we have a y deviation of 0 0.0041, or the difference between 0 0.1059 and 0 0.110. So we have x deviations and we have y deviations. We can go ahead and calculate a diametric deviation from these x and y values. And so a diametric deviation is the diametric deviation away from true position. So that's simply x squared plus y squared equals our hypotenuse squared. Uh, so we'll square root both of those and then we'll double it to get a diametric value. That's just a radial value here. We'll double that to get it. So the equivalent diametric deviation for these two values would be 0 0.0012 squared plus 0 0.0041 squared. Square root of that multiplied by 2 and that equals 0 0.0085. So we have a diametric deviation of 0 0.0085, and our feature control frame is telling us that we have 6 thousandths position available. 0 0.0085 is definitely larger than 0 0.006, uh, so therefore we have a failing location until we consider the bonus tolerance that may or may not be available to us. So let's go ahead and assess that bonus tolerance. Now we calculate bonus tolerance for this specific part in this specific feature based on the hole diameter. So we are given the example measurement of the hole, which measured at 0 0.080. Uh, so 0 0.080, our tolerance value is 0 0.078 plus 3 thousandths minus nothing. So at 
MMC, we get six thousandths position. But if we deviate away from MMC, we get bonus in that same amount that we deviated. The MMC value for this is 0 0.078, and the LMC is 0 0.081. And so we've deviated two thousandths away from the MMC, so we get a clearance of two thousandths to add back to position. So we can have technically eight thousandths of position and have a good part based on the size that this feature measured. Uh, well, we see that we measured eight and a half thousandths, so we are still outside of our tolerance. This would still be a failing part. Uh, so we'd have to fail this, but then we also notice that we have the MMB modifier. And the MMB modifier allows datum shift. Now, this is not bonus tolerance, uh, but it does act very similarly in the fact that we can shift uh, the part on the datum simulator, which would be a pin right here, we can shift this part over to try and bring in our feature to be intolerant. So we gain a little bit of clearance from the larger size of our feature. And again, our datum feature measured at 0.123. And so any deviation that has away from its MMC as a datum feature is allowable datum shift. But the important thing to remember with datum shift is it's a simultaneous requirement with anything else that shares this datum reference frame. And so we need to make sure that if we do shift to bring this feature into tolerance, that that same shift in direction and amount doesn't take some other features that utilize this datum reference frame out of tolerance. We get one datum shift to share across all features that utilize this datum reference frame uh, due to simultaneous requirements. So again, that is the high level answer, uh, again, to to recap, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time I see a missing diameter symbol, it is because it's just simply a typo. Uh, there are very, very niche uh, sections of the standard that allow us to drop that diameter off, um, but it is a different dimensioning scheme than we, the one we see here. So I'm gonna say this is a typo. Uh, the difference in position and true position, uh, is they are truly separate entities. True position is the ideal location, position is the tolerance value. And to calculate diametric deviations, it is simply the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and again, don't forget to multiply that by two because we're interested in a diameter, not just a radius. So hopefully that answers your questions a little bit and thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.